and welcome back to another video of the Feed My Sheep Foundation. We are a Bible study channel where we actually study the Holy Bible. And today we are studying from the second letter that was written by John. He was one of the first apostles that were converted and uh, listed in the book of Acts. And he wrote letters unto the people that he was able to convert after preaching the gospel to them. And the first book he wrote to, again, the people that were in the in the area where he was at. And he had converted those people into uh, disciples of Christ. And he wanted to encourage them and keep them in remind and remembrance of the fact that God is love and he is light. And we are walking in the light and the love of him because of Christ Jesus coming to the earth to be our savior, to unite us back to our heavenly father. So the second letter John wrote was to an, a lady that was, she's just noted in the book as being a chosen vessel of God. So um, I'm going to read the summary first, and then there's only one small chapter, and I'm going to go ahead and read that. So it starts off, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. For these words of the Apostle Paul could well stand as subtitle for John's letter, John's little letter he's writing right here. It says the recipients, which is... Um, we're talking about this book right here. The recipient is a chosen lady and her children. They were obviously standing. They were walking in truth, remaining faithful to the commandments they had received from the Heavenly Father. So that tells you right there. Now that goes over to go into, you know, the fact that we just said the letter is to a lady, a chosen lady. She was chosen by God to receive the Holy Spirit, to be born again, converted into the kingdom. And so now... She's walking in faith. She's believing God, trusting and walking in the truth. But she's standing and he wants to remind her and us also, because this is, you know, this is good for us to, you know, keep in, keep in mind also that, uh, you know, just like he said right here, she was, the, she's, she, they were walking in truth, remaining faithful to the commandments and they had received from the father. And it's easy to slip and fall. And for sure, the glory of God, you know, even when you are born again, because we still struggle with the flesh because we're in the flesh right here in this body. So John is deeply pleased to be able to commend them. And, but he takes nothing for granted, realizing that standing is just one step removed from falling. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he hesitates not at all to issue a reminder, love one another. The apostle admits that this is not a new revelation, but he views it sufficiently important to repeat because loving one another, he stresses, is equivalent to walking according to God's commandments. Amen. Because that's what Jesus Christ said to the disciples when he left from uh, in the midst of them. He wanted us to he wants us to walk in love toward one another and then again, show love toward the people outside the kingdom, um, you know. If as much as possible. And he said that in the word too. And Jesus Christ even let us know that sometimes that's just not possible. Because again, it's noted in the uh, gospels that, you know, when Jesus was talking to the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he called him a viper. And, you know, and that's not a really loving thing to say. But nevertheless, they were not a part of God's kingdom. So um, he viewed them as enemies of his, of our father. And uh, basically that's what one is if they don't want to come under the covenant and the calling of the Holy Father, which he has placed for every human being on the face of the earth to have. Okay, so then John indicates, however, that this love must be discerning. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back up here. Love one another. Yeah. The Let me go back up. I'm sorry. I skipped over something. It says the, the apostle admits that this is a new revelation, but he, re he views it sufficiently important to repeat. Okay, so I did say that part. Now, John indicates, however, that this love must be discerning, okay? And I think I've said that in one of my other videos that I did because some people think that you're supposed to be like this blind person walking and not naive and not really knowing about love or whatever. And you're supposed to fall and do this and, you know, and it's just unbelievable how people think that love is supposed to behave. But God is telling us right here. You know, that love is not naive and it doesn't think, okay? It's not something that's unthinking, okay? You do think in the, you know, you use your brain to love. He says open, it's not open to anything and any one kind of love, okay? So it's just not like this love, you just going through the world, just oh, la, 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 You know, uh, because God hates evil, okay? Now, he didn't say 
that we were to treat people that were evil to us differently. He said, love your enemies. But he definitely says it all throughout the word, how he hates evil. Okay, which was the reason for Christ to even come into the earth to save us from our evil selves. Okay, and what the evil that happened in the garden, how uh, Eve listened to the enemy's voice instead of paying attention and focusing on what God had already told her to do. So, uh, again, because it causes us to go down a different path when we do listen to the devil's voice. So that's not the type of love that uh, God wants us to be able to be discerning with the love. Okay, he says biblical love is a matter of choice. It is dangerous and foolish to float through life with undiscerning love. False teachers abound who do not acknowledge Christ as having come in the flesh. And is and it is false charity, which love is the word of charity, to open the door to false teaching, for we must have fellowship with God. We must have fellowship with Christians, but we must not have fellowship with false teachers. Okay. So again, we just want to stay focused on the type of love that God wants us to uh, be reminded of. And that's the type of love, kindness and goodness that you make a choice to uh, you discern, to use toward people. Because again, you, can, you don't want to fall prey to uh, the enemy's devices. We don't want to fall prey to them. So I'm going to start reading. This is again, this is a small chapter from this book. And it begins, uh, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love, in the truth. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwells in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of the children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. So she's being reminded about the commandment of love also. Um, her and her children. And uh, standing in the will of God and walking in the will of God and waiting and trusting on God to operate according to his word as he said that he would do. Um, so then it goes on to read that. And I'll beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new covenant uh, commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another and this is love, that we walk after his commandments, okay? This is the commandment that as he, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. And this is a deceiver and, and an antichrist. He says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. For whosoever transgresses abides not in the doctrine of Christ, okay, and has not God. For he that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has, he has both the Father and the Son. And we've talked about that because, again, you become a heavenly being, a heavenly citizen. citizen. Uh, you become a heavenly person on the face of the earth, a celestial being. So then, and also is the Father and also is the Son. So we become one with them and with heaven when you are born again, converted of the, by the Holy Spirit. So it says, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that bids him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So this can apply to... The same scenario I was given where like someone asking you for money, trying to trick you to see if you got money or to just to ask you just to see if you'll give them some money and, you know, and not really need it. But wanting to um, just maybe ask you for money, like I said, and they don't really need it, but they're asking you for it and they're looking like they're hungry, you know. Um, so that would be like a deceiving spirit. And again, right here, this is telling you the same thing that when you give in to those types of spirits. You're basically no better than that spirit because you have 
with the Holy Ghost discernment to not be deceived by the enemy. And I'm saying that we wouldn't be, we don't want to be, so uh, we don't want to be at all. You know, that's why, and the Heavenly Father does not want us to be either. That's why he gave us discernment through the Holy Spirit. But we must definitely uh, activate it. And this is a prime example of the fact that, uh, you know, again, about that giving, giving to the right spirit and giving to the right at the right time, okay? I mean, because God definitely says it is good to give, but and it is good to, uh, better to give than to receive. But again, he tells us how that is a discernment of the of giving. You know, because that's just like, okay, the Heavenly Father, God, gave His only begotten Son to come into the world to save the world of sin, okay? Now, that was a very detailed way of giving. He didn't just say, okay, go into the world. You know, He didn't just put Him out there to go into the world and, uh, you know, just to save us from our sins and... Um, come back to heaven and that's it no he there was a detailed reason for it that the, the intention behind what god wanted to do he wanted because he created us in his image just like him and he wanted us to be in relation with him and be able to commune with him as much as we wanted to and as much as possible he wanted to have an everlasting relationship with us and um so there was a great intention for the love that he shared when he had his son come do that come to the earth, you know, for the people. And it was a great love for us. It was a great love for his son because he's back. Jesus Christ is right back in heaven where he came from, seated at the right hand of the father. So, you know, but it was still done out of love and it was, uh, an it was an intention and it was a sacrifice. Okay. And it was a love of, you know, definitely we know it had to take discernment because God is discerning. He's very wise. So he, you know, created that for us to, be able to, again, be able to commune back with him, to have a relationship with him again, where his relationship was lost in the garden. But there was a specific reason. There was a specific intention. There was a specific motivation behind it. And love was the key. Sacrifice was the key behind it. So that's why we say, and he says in this word right here, regarding love and being discerning and not naive and um, giving um, when, you know, by the Holy Spirit, basically. So that's going to conclude the uh, study <laughs> from the one chapter and the second letter by John to this female lady that was, she was an elect, she was elderly woman too, with children chosen by God. And uh, we have one more book and that only has, it's a small book also with one chapter. And uh, we're going to do that tomorrow. And then that will conclude the books that John wrote to the people that he had, uh, he was able to draw into the kingdom through by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, that's going to conclude that Bible study for today. God bless you. And I will look forward to studying with you again as we continue to go forward and studying the Holy Bible.